Well, my soldering's not as beautiful as the board, that's for sure. But, uh, it'll have to do. Need to clean. Okay, so the hardest part about this is um, getting enough heat onto these solder tabs here. So um, I need to crank the iron up pretty good and give it some time for heating up these tabs, but that's, you know, understandable. That's a big chunk of metal to um, solder. But, um, you know, I think that's going to be reasonably um, secure with that amount of solder. They do say use the minimum amount possible. I mean, you could just gob it up in there, but there's no need. Um, I can't, I can't see a need for it, but anyways, yeah. Um, maybe let's uh, take a look at the uh, theory of operation of this little um, puppy, which is actually a 14-bit, um, what do they call it? A 14-stage sta ripple carry binary counter, so it's counting and um, then producing an output, and so let's see if we can uh, figure out uh, uh, what, uh, what the circuit actually does. Oh, we see what it does, but how does it work? So let's take a look at this 14-stage um, ripple carry binary counter. So uh, it's a uh, 14 stages. Each of the stages is a binary counter. They call it a binary counter or divider for the following reason. D flip-flop. For delay flip-flop. Or, <laughs> hello. And what? is a D flip-flop. It takes an input, say some sort of a clock with rising falling edges, and then based on a specific input on that clock, whether it, whether it be the rising edge or falling edge, let's say it's the rising edge, it will change state. It will flip from one state to the other. So <clears throat> what will happen to our, so if this is our input, clock, what's our output going to look like? So it's going to stay zero until it sees a um, rising edge, and then it'll go one, and then it'll retain that state until it sees another rising edge, and then it'll change state, and then it'll maintain that state till it sees another rising edge, and, it, and then it'll go high, and then it'll go low, and then it'll go high, and then it'll go low. And so notice what happened here. We divided this clock in half. So a D flip-flop can get used as a clock divider circuit. So <clears throat> obviously that can become very useful. And if you cascade these things, you can divide it in half again. So if you're feeding the output of this into another flip-flop, what you'll get is a divide by four. So now this is going to stay high until there, and this is going to stay high until there, and then so on and so forth. So you've increased the clock by, uh, you divided the clock in a quarter. So that is how D flip flops are used to change a um, divide a clock by two.
Okay, so let's take a look at the, um, the chip itself. There are, um, these are its output pins. This is the 14 stage ripple counter and oscillator with pins one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, uh, where's eight? Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Eight's in here somewhere. Oh, it's a functional diagram. Maybe eight's ground. Uh, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, eight's probably ground. Sixteen is power, or vice versa. Anyways, so those are the outputs and inputs. Um, nine, ten, and eleven control the um, the oscillator and then the rest are outputs and a reset so how does this, how is this chip set up it's set up 9 10 11 control the oscillator and then the reset pin will if you pull that high dominates resets all the stages so we've got this reset pin that if pull goes high all of these stages will get reset and so this is a little bit hard to parse but what they're trying to say here in compact form is you've got a diagram that looks like this so a um, a D flip-flop has the input and the inverted input and the output and the inverted output and then there's a reset um, on on this one so that you can reset the state back to zero so that part is this thing here, and that is, so that's FF1. Then we've got FF2 to FF13, which are corresponding to outputs 4 through 10, pins 4 through 10, and then 12 through 13. Um, not sure why 11 is missing, but... Um, there it is, and then 14. So we've got um, pins 1, 4 through 10, 12 through 13, and 14 are the stages that we have access to. So we don't have access to stage 3, it looks like. Um, it doesn't look like we have access to stage 1 either. These are the outputs here. So 4 through 10 and 12, 13, and 14. And then this diagram is supposed to be um, interpreted. You've got your inputs 2 all the way up to th um, input 13 and um, inverting input to all the way up to 13 except for 11. 11 is missing from this little notation here. It's like it's a heck of a way to try and reduce a diagram that looks something like this. Where we've got 14 of these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then these guys are all hooked up like this. But I suppose if you're spending a lot of money on technical drawing time, and then so we've got this is stage one, two, three. After stage four, we've got an output. And after stage five, we've got an output. And after stage six, we've got an output. Seven, eight, nine, ten. We don't have one after 11, 
but we have one after 12. Thir did I count that right? Oh, yeah, because that's stage four. Sorry. So this should be over here. Uh, so, the output of stage three, yeah, the output of stage three is accessible because that's the input to four. Q4 is, no, that's the output, so Q4 shouldn't be there. It's weird. So, one, two, three, four, that's Q4. Right? Because that would be Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's Q4, Q5, Q6, Q7, Q8. Q9, Q10, we don't have this one, Q12, Q13, oh, and that's Q14, right, of course, duh, so that's this diagram drawn out in somewhat more readable, well, hopefully more readable. Format. So, how's this all working? So, if we have a clock at a frequency F coming into here, then the frequency coming out, so the, if our input frequency here, fi0, the output frequency will be fi0 divided by 2. That's what the clock's going to look like on this line. And then the clock on this line is going to be fi0 divided by 4. And then in here it's going to be fi0 divided by 8, and so on and so forth. All the okay, but <clears throat> our circuit only needs uh, these three outputs um, of our counter. So let's redraw our diagram, simplifying things a bit so that we can understand what how we're going to count up to six with these three pins. Six plus a reset. Okay, so this thing is a clock divider, as we saw here. So why do they call it a um, counter? And the reason they call it a counter is pretty straightforward. If you've got a, a clock input here, then you've got these outputs that will be dividing the clock in, in two each time. But look at what happens when we count in binary. So we go one, Sorry, we go 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So this has a period of two. This has a period of four, because every second digit increases, so the, the re pattern repeats every four times. This has a period of eight, so every eight this counts, and this will have a period of 16, which is also two to the fourth, two cubed, 2 squared, 2 to the 1. So each of, the, each of these outputs, if you think of those as bits, will 
basically count up. And so you've got a 14-bit um, counter, you can count up pretty high. Since we're only looking at counting from 1 to 6, we only need to look at these. One, uh, sorry, these. One, so this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then if we can, we need to stop here, but if we can turn this into a reset, then it will keep make our counter go on um, indefinitely counting from one through six. And that is the beauty of this little circuit is that it does exactly that. It counts from one through six, resets on seven, and keeps going. It's brilliant as a circuit. Just brilliant as a circuit. And um, let's talk a bit about how it does that. What do you think, Sadie? Does any of this make any sense to you? Seriously, though. Come on. Help me out here. Yeah, this is going between 0 and 1 on alternating clock cycles. And then this is going between 0 and 1 on alternating clock cycles. And then this is going between 0 and 1 on alternating clock cycles. So this is every 2, every other, this is every 2, and this is every 4. Okay, so now we have to add one more state to this diagram, the 1, 1, 0 state, and that's reset. Okay, so I got my power supply hooked up to this um, breadboard, which um, has these two diodes and this resistor um, modeled on it. And right now, these two diodes the uh, um, cathode side is tied to ground, so that's representing a logic zero level. And on the output of that, we have a um, half a volt. Now, what happens when either of these go high? Nothing goes happens when that goes high. Nothing happens when this goes high. But when they both go high, we now get a logic 1 out of here, whatever VCC is. Um, so what we've created out of these two diodes and a resistor is known as a wired AND gate. And that's what this resistor, which I think is R6, on the circuit diagram here, plus these two diodes, D11 and D12, and that's these two diodes here on our circuit board, provide um, a rudimentary AND gate. It's not at the same logic level as the rest of the um, logic signals will be um, coming in and out of here, but it's enough to not be represented as a logic high until you have both of these as logic ones. So that's how this part of the circuit works. So let's just clear off some of the crap here, turn off our power supply, and take a look at this. Um, I've got an expanded version of the circuit diagram. Pins 4 and pins 5 are our, our Um, I've got these pins labeled incorrectly. Uh, so that's six, five, seven, five, six, seven. Anyways, when pins five and six, sorry, four and five, four, five, and seven, when four and five, yeah, pins, pins four and five, both are high, 
then we're going to have a reset signal because that means pin 12 goes high because we've got the this pair of diodes um, these are the inputs so this is a b This is the output, or sorry, that's VCC, and this is the output, and that's going to pin 12. So if A and B are truth table, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, we've got 0, 0, 0, and 1. So that's the same truth table as an AND gate. So if A and B are both 1, which is equivalent to saying that we've got a 1 here and a 1 here, which is equivalent to saying that there's a, this is high, pin 4 is high, and pin 5 is high, that means we will get our reset signal on pin 12. And so that's how reset works. So we go through our first um, states, 1 through 6, and then state 7 triggers a reset, and, a, and then we start over again. So now we need to figure out how to light all of these LEDs. Okay, so this rat's nest is a little bit hard to follow, but we've got ground connected, we've got pin 7, 5, and four connected, and those correspond to pins, the first three pins on our roll stage, which are the first three bits of the counter. And we've got, we're taking, um, keeping track of our reset pin as well. So we do um, a little bit of a um, signal grab and so we can see what the, what the output looks like. So let's consider the case where everything is at a logic low. If this is at a logic low, that means this transistor is turned on because VB is lower than VE, so that means we've got conductance through here, so that means that this is going to be lit. And that's low so that is a path. It also means that if this is low that means these two um, that's low so there's nothing that flows through here so these are off. It also means that these two are going to be high that's going through there, and that's to low, so that pair is going to be lit. And that is also low, so we can go through here, and so that pair is going to be lit. So that is, means that this corresponds to the roll of 5 on the dice.
next case is where we've got eventually but that's low oh right okay so since this is low if we follow this down through here we will get these two lighting up since that's low none of those are going to light and since that's low this is going to con this is going to light only if that is low as well but it's not it's high so that gives us our two so yes um, one zero one gives us our state number two so that corresponds to two on the dice and then our one one zero is our reset because one one through our and um, our wired and will reset the counter so yeah that is super duper clever that circuit holy smokes um, I am totally impressed I cannot imagine the kind of fiddling around that somebody might, must have had to have done with whole piles of different sketches on paper in order to come up with that circuit. It is brilliant. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So yeah. Oh, one other thing I should mention, this stuff over here controls the frequency of the oscillator. Um, so you can adjust how fast the dice roll by changing the values of this voltage divider relative to this capacitor for because the capacitor is going to be charging up and down and maybe we'll just bang that onto a scope just to take a look um although um yeah you can also take my word for it but uh yeah there you have it that is a pretty darn clever little circuit i have to say and yes thank you very much sar for putting that into a kit and sending it out into the world and making it on such a beautiful beautiful board that anybody would be happy to um happy to use on a regular basis brilliant 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 stuff nothing but impressive and thanks for watching if i ever need any dice i have them there thanks Sadie.